Welcome to episode 24 of the Soldiers of the Immaculate podcast. This episode is being recorded on the 24th of September, 2024. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Remember, O most compassionate Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly into thee, O Virgin, O Virgins, O Mother, to thee we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. Mother of the Word incarnate, despise our petitions, within thy mercy hear and answer them. A Lady of Fatima, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Francis, pray for us. St. Pio and St. Alphonse of Glory, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, amen. Well, after a couple of episodes where we took listener questions and hopefully gave good answers to those, uh, getting back to mental prayer tonight, uh, and then after this episode, we might pick up more questions and answers next time, or maybe we'll just do a couple more on, on mental prayer. We'll figure out the schedule as we go. But I, I know that Father has the topic laid out, so I'm just going to hit mute and listen. So we're up to the part now in Mental Press from the Golden, Golden Treatise by St. Peter of Alcantara uh, about devotion. What is devotion? So I quote him here. He says, Amongst all the troublesome difficulties to which they who frequent the exercises of prayer and meditation are subject, none is greater than that which they suffer from the defect of devotion, which is often felt in prayer. For if they have this, nothing is more sweet, nothing more pleasant, nothing more easy than to insist to pray and, medit and meditate. But if that be wanting, nothing is more hard, nothing more difficult, nothing more burdensome than to pray. Wherefore, seeing we have already spoken of prayer, meditation, and the method to perform it, now will not be beside our purpose to treat of those things which partly promote and partly hinder and extinguish devotion in the mind of man, as also to lay open the temptations which are obvious to those who frequent these pious exercises, and last of all, to annex some certain documents which may not a little avail to the, the well performance of this business. We will therefore begin from the definition of devotion, that it may manifestly appear what a precious pearl it is for which, uh, what a precious pearl it is for which we war, he says. So devotion, as St. Thomas Aquinas says, is a virtue that makes a man prompt and ready to every virtuous deed and stirring him up to do well. And that's, a, I'm going to repeat that because a lot of people think uh, devotion, they just is all these bubbly feelings and, and this, but let me repeat that because this is an important definition. St. Thomas says devotion is a virtue which makes a man prompt and ready for every virtuous deed and stirring him up to do well. So this definition evidently shows the necessity and utility of this virtue as containing more in it than any man can imagine. For better understanding of this, we must know that the chief impediment that hinders us from leading a virtuous life is the corruption of human nature proceeding from sin, which brings with it an inclination to vice and a great difficulty to do well. This makes the way of virtue trouble sin. Although in itself considered, nothing in this world is so sweet, so lovely, so beautiful. So the chief impediment he's telling us uh, that hinders us from leading a virtuous life, a whole, that mean, a, a holy life, you know, exercising the virtues, is the corruption of our nature, that we have a fallen nature. And so when we have a fallen nature, we have to deal with the seven capital vices, you know, capital sins, pride, avarice, lust, sloth, gluttony, envy, and anger. And this, this, is, this is difficult. And this, this will bring difficulty into our prayer life too. Believe me, these things. So I go on. He says, the divine wisdom has ordained that the help of devotion as a most convenient remedy to overcome this difficulty 
For as the north wind dissipates clouds and makes a clear sky so true, devotion expels from the mind the tediousness of this way and makes us prompt to pious actions. This virtue does so far forth obtain the name of virtue that likewise it is a special gift of the Holy Ghost, a heavenly dew, an assistance obtained by prayer, whose property is to remove all difficulties happening in prayer and meditation. So this is what devotion does. It's a heavenly dew, once again, he's saying, that it's an assistance obtained by prayer whose property is to remove all these difficulties happening in prayer and meditation, to expel tepidity, to instruct the, un the understanding, to strengthen the will, to kindle in our hearts heavenly love, and to extinguish the flames of unlawful desires, to engender a hatred and loathing of sin and all transitory things. And last of all, to him that possesses it, to infuse a new fervor, a new spirit of mind, and new desires to do well. Hence, it manifestly appears in what the true essence of devotion does not consist, not in tenderness of heart or abundance of consolation. Like I said, that's what most people would take devotion as, is abundance of consolation, a tenderness of heart. But that's not it. So he says, now let us treat of the means whereby this virtue, devotion, is to be attained unto, which will bring no small profit with it. For seeing it, to the spur to all other virtues, to set down the means whereby it is to be obtained, is no other thing than to prescribe the means to get all other virtues. So with this devotion this virtue of devotion it will lead to all the other virtues that we need you know to overcome these vices you know the virtue of humility uh, meekness and so on temperance so he gives us now saint peter gives us there's nine means or helps whereby the virtue of devotion may be attained unto with the last with the least difficulty the things which promote devotion are many, of which we will handle a few. Number one, first it helps much devotion if those exercises be undertaken with a generous resolution, ready to undergo what difficulty soever shall occur, for the obtaining of this precious pearl. For it is certain that nothing is excellent which is not difficult, of which kind is devotion, especially in beginners. And so this is the disposition that we have. We have to come with a generous resolution, a generous spirit. We have to come, like there's a rule in spiritual theology. You can only receive, uh, you can only receive what you are disposed to receive. So if you're going to come uh, to your mental prayer in the morning and you want to do these exercises and you, you, you're coming with like, yeah, I can't wait to get this over. You know, this is a pain in the neck. You know, I did it the first couple of days. It was fun. But now I'm, where I'm in it a week, two weeks, and it's getting to be a pain. You know, I don't want. No, this is the wrong attitude. That's not a generous attitude. And, and what are we going to prayer for? You're doing this mental prayer, right? Keep in mind is the end is to praise God, to worship him, that you're going into a deep communion, a one-on-one -on -one with you and God, no one else. And, you know, that's why we said the time aside and a lot of times like i said early in the morning is the best we'll talk about that more because you want to be generous that you're giving all your attention to god and he's god and he deserves to have all our attention so this is it if you you have to go into this mental prayer with this attitude i'm willing to undergo whatever difficulty shall occur no matter how bad the dryness is no matter how bad the distractions are I'm going to persevere because I want to show God that I love him. And this is and this is really important, and especially in beginnings. Num the second aid, he says, is a diligent custody of the heart from every vain and unprofitable thought, from affections, strange love, 
and turbulent motions does mu much promote devotion. For it is evident that every one of these is no little hindrance. Seeing this virtue chiefly requires a quiet heart, free from all inordinate affections, and so well composed as the strings of a well-tuned instrument. This is so, so important. The custody of your heart, that you, you, you don't just let your mind, your imagination go wherever it wants. You know, like he says, every vain and unprofitable thought. Because believe me, you know, the devil does attack. When he sees you, if you haven't been doing mental prayer, and even if you have, but when you see, especially now, all of a sudden, this the devil sees you want to dedicate one-on-one -on -one time with God because he knows if you persevere in this, you will become a saint. He knows. So he's going to do things to discourage you. And just our fallen human nature, which we spoke about already, uh, gets in the way. You know, we, we could be lazy. We could be, uh, you know, many things come into play. But these affections this strange love he says turbulent motions all this thing all these thoughts because when you come that's why when we go into mental prayer when we went over this already you make the sign of the cross this is why and, and when you make the sign of the cross just don't do it sloppily think about what you're saying that you're doing everything in the name of the father god the father the son and the holy ghost and do it with reverence and just that point alone, when you start out like that, that helps put you in this mode. I am entering into communion with God. I'm entering into this personal relationship with God. And that's when I said to remember these steps that then you could call on Our Lady, because she's the mediatrix of all graces, to say, please, Blessed Mother, help me with all these thoughts that come into my mind. Because believe me, you go to prayer and you're going to experience this. You make the sign of cross, all of a sudden you're thinking about, what am I going to have for lunch? Pizza or a hot dog, whatever it may be. You know, these things are going to pop in your head and you got to empty your mind in a proper sense and you fill it with God. You know, you don't want to remain empty, of course. So you have to learn how to, to deal with your affections, your these thoughts that will pop into your head. And let me tell you something, the devil does come. And sometimes the thoughts could be wicked, and you know it's from him, Dad. You know, I'm amazed, too. Uh, it's like when a priest, when we vest, we put an amice on our head, and that's the helmet of salvation. You know what that's for? To protect the priest uh, from wicked thoughts, because believe me, the devil comes right into the sanctuary. And you're about to do the holiest thing, say, as a priest, and phew, he wants to get into you, so they call it the helmet of salvation, you know, to protect us. And so take these things serious. And, and watch out and for the temptations to good, too. I mean, you may be just beginning mental prayer and remember, oh, yeah, there's this one prayer I wanted to say. Let me look it up on my phone, and during which time you're going to get distracted with all the other notifications and everything on your phone. Uh, have that all set up ahead of time. Yeah, well, well I suggest it's a good point that you're bringing out that, do not take that phone into that your prayer room, wherever it's going to be. Don't take it with you. Shut it off, too. Don't, don't even put it on vibrate, whatever. You need, this is for time for you and God alone. And that's why I say, so you call on Our Lady, but you also call on your guardian angel. Call on your patron saint to help you. Because the Blessed Mother, once again, she has the graces that you need to pray with devotion. She has the graces for you to overcome these temptations. And these temptations, God will use them. God will use the thoughts too because it helps purify us. It helps show our, our love for God. And real quick, I, I've said it before, but I'll say it again because it, it's so important to hear. St. Alphonse says, who's more pleasing to God? The person that goes to prayer, say mental prayer, makes a sign of cross, is just filled with devotion and almost could feel the grace is coming from God and that happens and it's a beautiful thing and in the beginning when you start mental prayer a lot of you when you start doing this and you commit there's going to be a honeymoon they say which is me you know it's going to be all bliss and joy at first because kind of God lures you in like that you know okay give him a little ice cream and then comes the time where he withdraws that and then you have to persevere. So he said, so who's more pleasing to God? The person that goes to prayer, 
And the minute they make the sign across, it's filled with devotion, and it just their their hearts just totally open, and they spend the whole half hour just praising God, and and they 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 feel unbelievable. Or the second person who goes to prayer, for the minute he makes a sign across, he's he's thinking about his job, he's thinking about the, he's got nothing but distraction. But you know what? He keeps on dismissing him, keep on dismissing him, and, and keeps on recollecting himself, Say, no, God, I came here to pray. I love you. And he has to fight like that for the whole half hour, but he perseveres and he does the whole half hour. That person, St. Alphonse says, is much more pleasing than God because it's easy to love God when you have all the devotion and the candy from heaven, but when he pulls it away, are you willing to follow him to Calvary? Are you willing to let him and drew these steps of prayer, which we'll be talking about too. Uh, this helps purifies us. It helps God's chiseling away at us and making us into deeper image and likeness of Him. So the next one, the third one, is custody of the senses, especially the eyes, the tongue, and the ears. By seeing these, the heart is much distracted. For those things which enter in through the eyes and the ears do strain the mind with divers' imaginations and consequently disturb and trouble the peace and tranquility of the soul. Wherefore, one not without cause said that he that meditates must be deaf, blind, and dumb. For by how much less he wanders abroad with greater recollection will he rejoice at home. My friends, this is such good advice. And as Max brought up the telephone, I'm glad he brought it up. In our, we live in this technological age that is just absurd. Like people, I mean, you go pump gas at the gas station, have TVs out there now. So you can't even pump gas for five minutes. You have to watch a TV or some ads. They're trying to sell you something. I mean, everything. You, you go to restaurants today to eat. You see families, nobody's taught, they were all looking at their cell phones, they're all doing this. But guess what? All these things that you see with your eyes, your eyes is the windows to your soul. And this is what's really one of the worst things about pornography, because your mind, when you see an image, that image stays in your brain for the rest of your life. It's there, it's stored, like it's like a hard drive. And guess what? The demons can can go into that hard drive, hard drive and bring that image up to you. Yeah. And so this is where you really have to practice custody of the senses, custody of the eyes, the tongue, and the ear. Same thing. You want to listen to wicked music and this and that. When you, and now you want to go commune with God. And, and you, you know, these verses are going to be popping up in your head. It, so really take this serious. Start practice, and today we have to practice the custody of our eyes. We have to. I mean, we're surrounded by impurity. It's just off off the charts. It's everywhere, and not it. We our eyes see many other things too that are horrible, horrible. I know. I had two friends that were in the twin towers when they went when they went down. One was in the first tower. One was in the other. This one man. He told me, he remembered what his grandfather told him, when you don't see nothing, you'll, it will never bother you. So he, he had that in his mind. When he got out that door, he said to himself, don't look back, just keep running. And he, and he didn't see it, a lot of horrors, he said. And another man, he saw people jumping from the buildings and doing, uh, uh, going, falling to their deaths and everything. And that man was tortured with those images because that image is stored in his mind. So just to be really try to practice this custody of the eyes, the tongue, and the ear. The tongue, too. The tongue is wicked. The tongue is wicked. It's in the book of James, it says, you know, you know, nobody can, uh, you know, it's hard to control. They use like the ship, a big ship has a rudder that controls this gigantic ship, you know. You put a bit in the horse's mouth, you control them like that, but it's nothing can control the man's tongue. And, uh, you know, so you want to enter deeper and deeper and more silent. Start, start uh, practicing temperance with your speech. Don't just always be running your mouth. And these things are all going to help you. Like you said, some man said this. He said that he that meditates must be deaf, blind, and dumb. Okay? And it will pay off in your prayer, believe me. 
the fourth eight to uh, devotion is solitude helps devotion much for it does not only remove the occasions of sin and take away the causes which chief, chiefly disturb the heart and senses but it makes a solitary man to rouse up himself from temporal things to be present to himself to converse incessantly with god to which the opportunity of the place does admonish which emits no other society and so solitude is such a, a great aid to devotion and it's true i remember i was away from the church for 17 years and every year i used to go hunting with friends and uh and i used to love i loved the outdoors i was a hunter fisherman camping hiking but i remember when i used to hunt we were serious hunters we we'd be up walking up climbing up mountains at 3 30 in the morning to get to your post you know before the sun comes up so you got a better chance of getting a deer and we would stay out for at least eight hours ten hours a day and uh let me tell you something one of the things i remember that used to it was one of the few times of the year because i wasn't praying back then that i was faced with solitude and i remember it, it, it was uncomfortable at times because it made me think about god it made me think about what are you doing with your life where are you going man there's got to be more than life than what you know was going on at that time it wasn't good for me i'm not proud to say so this solitude and then when you're living a life of grace the more solitude you seek the closer you get to god the more you're going to seek solitude because you don't find god in the noise my friend and what's in the world nothing nothing but noise 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 and that's like you know i grew up living in the city i grew up in uh, new york city queens one of the five boroughs and i mean you grow up over there the, you know the sounds you're used to sirens police sirens fire sirens and and those things when you grow up like that they're almost comforting for you some people can't fall asleep if they're not used to hearing those noises and then when you go to the country and i live i live up in the mountains now and i don't know maybe you could hear it from the microphone i got the window open the crickets are so loud <laughs> it's unbelievable it's a different kind of silence though so my point is that solitude really really helps you you know that's where we're going to find god that's where it's just you and god and when you're when you enter into silence the more you do it every day the better off you're going to be and the better your prayer is going to be because god will speak to your heart in the silence be still it says in the scripture and know that i am god and when we're still we and that's why the kingdom of god my friends is within do we meditate upon that and, you know people are always searching for god everywhere but if you're in sanctifying grace and you have to be in sanctifying then god dwells within you and so when you enter into that silence that solitude you're, you're entering into deeper and deeper uh relationship with god in prayer it's awesome the fifth means of devotion is the reading of spiritual books does not a little nourish devotion because it administers matters of consideration abstracts the mind from all things created stirs up devotion and causes that a man does sooner adhere to the consideration of those things which in reading offered him a more pleasant taste than that wherewith the heart abounds may often occur to his memory so the reading of spiritual books all the saints like saint john vianney he always stressed uh, the science of the saints and i encourage everyone to always have like a biography of a saint at your bedside and you you could with into the library loans now you could get them easy so you could find a book if the library doesn't have it they could get it for you and that way you don't have to spend all this money on books and it's so important to to do these this spiritual reading and i recommend what my moral professor taught me one time i i've told you this i'll say it a million times because it's the best advice he was going back to rome and i said father alphonse any less advice for me he goes my son don't waste your time reading good books <laughs> i said what, what where's he going now you know he says but only read the best and by that i mean the fathers and the doctors of the church and the saints he goes you won't waste no time you're growing wisdom and holiness it's such a blessing when you start reading constantly every day you should be reading from some saint father or doctor and you know the doctors uh 
Yeah, most of them are all saints too. Of course, they're saints, and uh, the same thing with the fathers of the church. And so these are going to be a great aid because you're going to, I mean, they share their meditations with us. They share, and we just learn so much from them. And so be open. I said, always read, you know, always have a biography of a saint by your bed uh, or, or any writings by the saints. Uh, I think in the past, maybe Max could repost it, but we have uh, a links to the daily meditations of, of St. Alphonse for the whole liturgical year. And when I say gold, if you use that book and you can get them, it's online, so you could do it for the whole year. There's two meditations in the morning, there's a spiritual reading, and then two in the evening. You're going to learn so much, and you'll have so much material when you go to prayer. It's going to help you. All right. And then the six means uh, to help devotion is continual memory of Almighty God and daily imagination of his sacred presence that always thou art in his sight with a frequent use of aspirations which saint augustine called ejaculatory prayers for these do god the palace of the mind conserve in devotion in our fervor that a man is always willing to to pious actions and ready to holy prayer this document is one of the most principal instruments of the spiritual life and the only remedy for those who have neither time nor place with opportunity to insist to long prayer and meditation. And they which do thus bestow their labor to frequent aspirations will in a short time profit for it. So, you know, these short prayers, they're, they're beautiful. Like, you know, simple thing. Jesus, I trust in you. Uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary, have mercy on me. Whatever these prayers keep, like it's like you ever see a fire it starts to die on die on you and so if you blow on it what happens the flame and it kindles the flame and then it it you know it it flames up and it's the same thing with our prayer so like if you do your mental prayer in the morning you should take a, a point from that prayer that that inspired you during the prayer and you could use that for the rest of the day uh, the day to just fall back on that uh any it, it will just help you with your devotion to god and he keeps the fire burning and so the thing is this is what saint paul you know in, in pray at all times and our lord we should pray at all this is how we pray at all times this is the gold mental prayers to help you to get you to be praying at all time which means that you're going to be lifting up your heart and your mind to god at all times i mean anything you know we take so much for granted my friend so much for granted all of us it could be anything you know from the minute we wake up that we're able to step out of bed that we're able to stand up and walk i mean these are beautiful things this could help us throughout the day any little thing to help you but these ejaculatory prayers you know there's so many of them uh i love the the the, the pilgrim prayer lord jesus christ son of god have mercy on me, a poor sinner. I love that prayer. And the, the you know, the Eastern Church, they do that, the monks sometimes, thousands and thousands of times. That's some that's the only prayer they do a lot of them, especially in the East. Uh the surrender prayer is another one that I really love by Father Delingo. Uh, oh my Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. What a beautiful prayer that you're totally surrendering to God. And that's what the greatest gift that God has given us, my friends, is our free will. And if we, and you surrender that back to him and you just keep surrendering and you put everything into his hands, it, 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 it's beautiful and you will grow and you will continue to grow. So, and he, he points out that, especially those that have a hard time, some of you guys have tough schedule. I know the times that we're living in, there's a lot of men that have families that have to work two jobs now. They have to. They can't. The prices, the inflation, uh, you know, everything has gone skyrocketed, you know, from the price of gasoline, the price of groceries, the car insurance that you have to pay, the medical insurance that you have to pay, the rent, the mortgage. So sometimes, you know, people really have to, they don't have as much time. They can't dedicate uh, an hour a day to prayer so this is where by doing these ejaculations during the day you know can really it, it develops your prayer life and keeps it going 
The eighth means is corporal abstinence and austerities. Do much help devotion, fasting from meat, a frugal table, a hard bed, hair cloth, discipline, and the like. As they originally proceed from devotion to the mind, so they do not a little cherish, conserve, and nourish the root from whence they spring, which is devotion. You, you need penance when you're, when you're praying. You, it's just not enough to pray. We have to pray and do penance together. And this is really, really important part of growing in prayer. And, uh, you know, some people say devotion, fasting, discipline. And what's that? You know, people think, you know, you read the lives of the saints, how they would take, you know, ropes and cords and take uh, scourge themselves at night. They wear these, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, chains around their legs, around their arms. Uh, I mean, uh, blessed Matt Talbot who was a third order of Franciscan. He was a wicked alcoholic, wicked alcoholic. And he took the oath two or three times. And he, finally, the third time, I think, he never broke it. He never drank. And then what he would do with all his spare time, especially on Sundays, he would go from church to church. And he, even when the church was called, he would, he would nail, kneel down on concrete, on stones. And when he died, he had chains around his knees. So when he was kneeling, he was kneeling on these chains. They were embedded in his skin. And... Okay, so my point with that is these things are good, but I'm going to warn you, before you start taking on heavy-duty penances and, and, and heavy-duty fasting and all these things, may, please get some direction. Of, do it on the guidance because the devil could use that too because I've also seen where people start doing heavy penances and it becomes an end in itself. So penance... And this abstinence is a means to an end, all right? But when it comes an end to itself, pride comes in. The devil comes along and says, oh, look at you. You you, you hardly eat. Look at your friends there. Look at them. They're fat slobs. It is that. Look at this. Look at that. And you start thinking too much of yourself. So be careful with these disciplines. But they do help. You got to be doing some form of penance. You got to be fasting every week. You have to. What's supposed to? So you should be abstaining on Fridays. And uh, I don't recommend the Vatican II way. Uh, well, you don't have to. If you don't want to abstain from me, do some other penance. But just do it. All right, knock it off. And you know. And then so and don't be clowns like when you're abstaining from meat on Fridays. Uh, oh, let's have a nice lobster dinner, shrimps. You know, or this or that's something that's uh, you know you love anyway so do it right and this will really help you when it comes to prayer because you'll be more disciplined and when you're when you're doing this abstinence when you're you're taking control of uh as saint francis he used to call his his body brother ass and he said sometimes you gotta whip whip brother ass because <laughs> he's stubborn and he's true he's right but so when you start denying yourself in legitimate things, when it comes time to deny, uh, to not give in to a temptation, your will is getting, you've been testing, you've been developing your will, you're getting stronger and stronger. It's much easier to overcome these temptations then. So the last one uh, to, uh, to help uh, this devotion is works of mercy. He says, a our great devotion because they increase the confidence we have to appear before God and to be presented before a sacred majesty. They do accompany our prayers and finally they merit that they be sooner heard by God, especially seeing they proceed from a merciful heart. So these acts, works of mercy, remember you have the corporal works of mercy and the spiritual works of mercy. We, Our Lord in the Gospel of Matthew 25, he tells he. He says, you know, Lord, I did miracles in your name. I did this in your name. He goes, I don't know you. He goes, why, why, do you, why don't you know me? He goes, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me anything to drink. When I was in prison, you didn't come visit me. He, This is where these Protestants, I don't know where they get that, you know, all you, all you need is faith and faith alone to be saved. The gospel said the exact opposite. Jesus is saying right there in the gospel, no, I don't know you because you didn't do these corporal works of mercy. 
But when you do this, like it says, it brings us more confidence to appear before God. Say, Lord, I was merciful. I did feed the, the, the hungry. I did visit those in prison. And I did it mainly because I, was, I had charity because I, won, I loved you first. And I love them for your sake. And so it's going to be much easier going before the judgment, knowing that we did these works of mercy, than not doing them. And once again, this is going to help your spirit of devotion, which is going to help you in your prayer life. So that ends up the next week. I'm going to go over the things that hinder devotion. And, uh, I don't know, Max, you want to say anything or is there anything else we have to bring up tonight? Um, not really. Um, I mentioned at the very beginning, we did the last couple of episodes were questions and answers, and we'll do more of that in the future. And if you have questions for the podcast, the email address is podcast at SOTI.blog. And if you're putting questions in the YouTube comments, um, if I see it, it's by accident. So please email it in if you want the question addressed. And one thing I want to add too, because this is all connected. This is why I'm focusing on prayer because we, we are living in times. It's unbelievable. The world has never sunk to a low, lower than this as it is now. All hell is literally let loose. I know it. Everybody could sense it. Even people that don't follow God, they sense the evil. This election is driving people crazy, you know. And, you know, I've spoke on the election. I spoke about, you know, can you vote for the lesser of the two evils? It's really using a principal double effect. Uh, you know, I went through all these things, but it, it's driving people. I, I see so many people that obsessed with nothing but the election. We got to be obsessed with God because God's our only way out of this, my friends. Yes, we do our duties, this and that, and you can vote. And, and if you don't want to vote because everyone's holding intrinsically evil uh, positions, you're not sinning. But please do your mental prayer. Start doing your prayer. Instead of waking up, Joe, and putting on the news right away because you want to see, oh, what's the latest polls? Who's ahead? Who's this? Who's that? I mean, it is wicked out there. And it's coming, my friends. We are definitely, people said the chastisers are coming. No, they're here. The chastisers, we're, we're, we've been in the middle of the chastisements for a long time. But as I pointed out many times, as the sin increased, the chastisements increased. And so we're in, and the chastisements are going to really, really increase till we hit. Uh, you know, the fulfillment of Fatima prophecies, uh, Akita, La Salette. And I don't think we're far away. We're not far away. Uh, so please take this serious. Really start doing this mental prayer. And you will never regret it. So thank you for all your support. Thank you for your prayers especially. Keep them coming. And uh, and pray for Max too, of course. Not only me, but Max. We're doing this together here. And thank you for all your financial support. So you can bow your head and pray for God's blessing. Pax et benedictio de omnipotente patri, et filii spiritus sancti, descendus super. Vos, amen, et semper amen.